Hey, welcome back to part four of my mini series on what exactly is a container. Now in this video, we're focusing specifically on container registries. So at first we're gonna go over exactly what a container registry actually is, and then we'll look at pushing and pulling images to and from container registries. We'll finish up the video with a quick look at a very convenient tool called Scopio, where we can start to have a look at things like inspecting container images on a registry without actually having to pull them down to the local machine. Um, we can also look at copying images from remote container registries into different file formats on, the local, on a local system. And then finally, we can look at an example of using Scopio to copy an image from one registry directly to another. All right, let's get into it. So what is a container registry? Based on the past couple of videos, you probably guessed that it's just a registry filled with container images. And if you did, you would be right. We also know that a container image is just a tar file made up of other tar files that house file systems and also some config to piece it all together. So it's just files. A container registry at its core is a file server, a file server serving container image files. Now there's more advanced and feature rich container registries out there doing a lot more than just that. We'll take a look at one in a moment, but the base goal of most registries is to make it easy to discover, share, and collaborate on software. An example of a more feature-rich container registry is the Red Hat registry. The Red Hat registry does a lot more than just host some files. Here I've searched for a Node.js image. I found the Node.js 12 image, and we can see that there's a whole bunch of metadata about the image. What's interesting about this is we also have this health rating. Now, if we look into the security tab, you can see that we've got kind of like a mini security report. The Red Hat registry actually has security features like image scanning and CVE tracking for any known vulnerabilities. And then obviously this health index that makes it easy to identify what images are currently healthy and what images have gone bad. The cool thing about this is if we had say 10 node apps out there all using this same image, and then a vulnerability was discovered in any of the layers used by the image, the Red Hat registry would be able to notify us of that vulnerability in that layer. And we could easily just swap that layer out with a new image that doesn't have the vulnerability in it anymore. This is pretty unique to containers. Imagine if you were mutating an OS running in a VM, for example, and there was a vulnerability in one of the application binaries that you bundled with your app. You'd have to go through on each machine and apply a patch. So it's obviously a lot more difficult than simply changing a version number of a Node.js image that you're pulling as part of your image build process. Now from this registry, you can also get a glimpse of all the packages that are available inside the image. And you can also look at the Docker file that's used to build the image. So let's start looking at interacting with some container registries. Okay, so in the last video, we focused down here on building some container images. And now it's time to follow these arrows and send those container images up to the container registry. Let's go back to the Mac. Okay, so there's a lot of different container registries out there. So how do we go about accessing them? First up, the default registry configured for the Docker CLI is actually docker.io. And it's not possible to set any other registry as the default registry. So if you did something like Docker search nginx, it's only going to give you results for the docker.io container registry. This is done intentionally by Docker so that there's no confusion about the images that are being pulled and run by different people on different machines. So for example, if it was a configurable option, you might have one person's default pointing to docker.io and then another person might have their default pointing to the registry.redhat.io, both of which may contain the exact same image name. So in that case, both people may end up with different results because they're actually using two different images from two different sources, even though they entered the exact same Docker command. It was just their registry config that was different. So even though you can't set a default, you can still search, pull, push, and all that stuff to different container registries using the Docker CLI. You just have to be explicit and preface the container image name with the image namespace and the name of the registry that you want to action against. So for example, if we wanted to search the Red Hat registry for an Nginx container now, we could do something like this. And there you can see the results from the Red Hat registry. Now, Podman and Builder work just a little differently to this. Let's SSH into the production host and have a look. So basically with Podman and Builder, you can specify different registries to search against. You just have to specify them in order in an array in the registry's config file. So you can have a look at the config here. And you can see here is where you have to enter the config. So like I just mentioned, Podman and Builder will use these registries in the order that they're specified in this config file. 
unless you specify a container registry explicitly. So for example, if we run the same podman search command, you can see that all the registries that were specified in that array were searched and we have the results for all of them. Now, obviously here you can be more specific too and get the results for just a single registry. So I think it's probably just best to be as specific as possible about the registry URLs whenever you can. That way there's no ambiguity about what you're actually trying to do. All right, so now we can focus on pushing the container image from the Mac up to the container registry. So I can exit this and get back to the Mac. And the first thing we need to do is log into the container registry. So just a quick look at that. You might remember this from the very first video where I did a really quick push and pull. So you can see in here, I've just got a single namespace I don't have any repos configured yet and there's no images uploaded to this registry. So I'll come back here and use the docker login command to log into the registry. And there we go. So that was successful. So we're now logged in. So we should be able to push our container image to the repo in the container registry. Let's first take a quick look at the images that we have available to us on the local system. But you can see we also have, for example, the repository node where there's no container registry associated with it, no namespace. So in a, in a case like that, if we wanted to push the node repository up to the container registry, then we would need to re-tag the image. So just to quickly show you how to do that. You can now see that we have the exact same image just re-tagged. So that would be ready to push to our private repo as well. Now let's push our Hello World app. So there's a few components to the URL. Uh, first up, we have the registry server. Now you get these details typically when you actually sign up to the registry. So when I signed up to the IBM container registry, it told me that the URL for the Sydney container registry is au.icr.io. If you were sending to Docker Hub, that would be docker.io. Then we have the namespace, which is pretty standard and just a way to logically group together different container repos within a registry. And then we have the repo name. So that's really just a collection of different versions of a container image. So for example, the repo hello world might house the Hello World version one, version two, version three images. So whenever you update your container image and push the new image to the registry, you're basically adding a new entry into the repo. And finally, we have the tag. So the tag is really just a convenient way of pointing to a specific image layer or a version rather than referencing the digest of an image. So you saw those earlier, those SHA-256 hashes, that would be, it would be very hard to point to those all the time. So the tag makes that a lot easier. So it lets others easily reference the right layer to pull. And basically as a result also pulls all the dependent layers as well. So you could tell someone to pull version three of your image and they don't have to go around and try and find the correct digest to pull. They can just enter version three. Now, if you don't specify a tag, then the default tag that's used is latest. So that's usually used to point to the latest version of the repo that's been uploaded. That's completed. If we take a look at the registry now, we can give that a refresh. And we can see in our namespace now we have one repo and one image. So you can see here it comes with the metadata from the host system. We can click into the image to see some more details about it. You can see up here, this is actually the SHA-256 hash of the image. So you can see why it's a lot easier to tag your images correctly. And you can see that the container registry also does some security scanning as well. So we've got no issues on this particular image. So again, I've just shown this with the Docker command line, but the Podman and the builder command lines have the exact same functionality. So both of those tools will also let you correctly tag an image and then push the image to the container registry. Okay, so our image is now sitting up here in the container registry. So what we need to do next is we need to move over to the production host and we need to pull a copy down so that we can run it. So first we can SSH into the production host. Let's just do a quick check of our images that are available. Okay, so these are what we used in the last video. Let's just make sure nothing's still running and then clear them out so there's no confusion. Okay, still think something's associated with that. So we'll just force that. Okay, so we have no running containers and no images. Now we want to log into the IBM container registry. Okay, and now we've logged in. So we can just replace push with pull. Okay, so we'll leave that there for now. 
Uh, I'll return to that in the next video when we look deeper into what actually happens behind the scenes when we start this image and it starts running in its own isolated environment. But before I wrap up this video, I want to quickly show you a very handy tool for playing with container images and also interacting with container registries. And that's called Scopio. So we've used it a little bit in the previous videos, but I'm just going to go into a little bit more detail on the types of activities that it can help you with. So first of all is the Scopio inspect command. This saves you from having to actually pull an image down onto the local machine and then using something like Podman inspect to inspect the image. You can inspect it directly on the remote registry using the Docker protocol. So you can see this went off and it inspected the Nginx container image on the Docker container registry. And by the way, this is probably a good time just to show you that tags are really just a way of pointing to a particular image identified as a digest. So where we just use latest then, you could actually grab this digest here. Substitute the tag latest with that digest. And we actually need to substitute the colon for an at. And you can see the same thing's actually returned. So I guess this just proves that the latest keyword in this case is definitely much easier than knowing that SHA-256 digest. So like uh, Podman and Docker, you can also use Scopio to copy images from remote registries. It's not too different, but with Scopio, you can actually be a little bit more creative about where you copy the image to. So let's get a copy of Nginx and store it in our local containers storage. So you can see there that we now have that Nginx image stored as Nginx copy. You can also use Scopio to pull an image down directly to a local directory. So instead of container storage, we can actually just say dir. But that's in the Docker format and we don't really care so much for that. What we can also do is do the same thing, but save it in an OCI format. That's the format we're more familiar with. Okay, and for the last example, I'll show you how we can move a container image from one registry to another without actually having to pull and push the image. So this can be handy for promoting images between registries, for example. So I've logged into Docker Hub, and now as a first step, we can create a new repository. I'll call this Hello World Prod. You can see we now have this Hello World Prod repo. We can go back to the command line. So you can see here, I specify the source credentials for the IBM container registry and the destination credentials for my Docker registry, and then the path to the Hello World version one file in the IBM container registry, followed by the path where I want to copy that image to in the Docker registry. Now you can ignore the credentials that I've put in here as well, because they will be removed by the time this video goes live to YouTube. And there we go. We can come back to the Docker registry. We can give it a refresh. And we now have the version one tag in the production registry. Now, if you're anything like me and you do this sort of work from your Mac, even though the images end up on a Linux machine, uh, you need to just remember to override the architecture and the OS when you're using Scopio. So for example, if I go back to the Mac and do a Scopio inspect, you'll see that it can't find any images and that's because it's using OS Darwin. So what you can do is you can override the architecture, which isn't really needed for me in this case, but it's an option just in case you need it. And you can override the OS. Okay, cool. And that wraps up this video on container registries. As always, I hope you enjoyed it and most importantly, learned something new. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe button so you can be notified whenever I release a new video. Now, if you have the time, make sure you stick around for my fifth and final video of this mini series. It's going to be a good one. It's on running containers where I take a deeper dive into technologies like Run C, Umochi, and Linux namespaces and C groups. All right, cool. Thanks again and bye for now.